Welcome to 15 plus 15, and in case you're wondering, happy Valentine's Day to many of you around the world that check in with us. Today we're going to be doing a little bit slightly different than we normally do. We will hopefully have a devotional for 15 minutes and also a time of prayer, but it's going to be focused a little bit different than our series over the last couple of days, but it's going to work out okay because... We need to see and talk about this whole area of love. You know, because of Valentine's Day, why not talk about love, right? <laughs> but as I was thinking about this whole area of love, uh, there is also the flip side of love or the other side of the coin that works together with love. Uh, so much is the area of forgiveness. Forgiveness and love are like the two sides of one coin. And a lot of times people can't love one another because they can't forgive one another. And to me, a lot of times forgiveness is the first step that you need to take on the journey to really experience the fullness of God's love. You know, when we look over into First John uh, chapter 4, it kind of, John gives us a definition of what love is all about. And... Uh, if you were to read from verses 7 all the way down to the end of the chapter and even beginning into the first part of chapter 5, you would see uh, over 25 times the word love, the word agape love, uh, a love that is, that is given with no strings attached. And so when we think about this whole area of Valentine's, it's something that kind of a traditional thing that <laughs> the merchants love us to go out and buy flowers and chocolates and everything else but one of the biggest things we could do is to go out and share the agape love of Jesus with those around us uh, with our neighbors with uh, whoever we come in contact and so I I feel that we, we get the proper introduction of love and how it works with this whole idea of forgiveness uh, is is important and, and I just wanted to quickly uh, look at verse 18 and down through to 21 just as our introductory to this whole area of uh, Valentine's and the love that we're supposed to somehow have for each other um, in verse 17 it says love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is so we are in this world. And there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, and because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Verse 20, If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God who he hasn't seen? And it continues on. But we see here that when you're really walking in perfect love, the, the whole area is that love gets rid of fear. And I believe not only fear, but attached to that fear is also anxiety. The stresses of life. You know, when you can just walk in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can then, you know, have... Um, the peace that passes all understanding. We don't have to be full of stress and fear. And John here is trying to define for us that really fear is not part of what, what is all about when it comes to God. Jesus Christ wants us to see that his agape love, that he gave us his love, and that we do not have to fret or be anxious or full of fear, but just accept his love through faith in him. And as we do, we can then be able to not only love God, but to love one another. It's so important. Well, as we think about this as an introductory to our whole theme of love, uh, the reason why I, I picked this a little bit today is because we also have a little Bible card that we have made up at the office, and it's got a little heart down here in the corner, and it's got another little heart on the back. And it talks about the, the title on the front of this is Peter, Be Loved and Loved Others. Be loved and love others. And it takes us to the place where we need to realize that 
even though we may have blown it. And the reason why I picked this whole area of Peter today, because Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. Peter, you know, expressed how great a love he had for God. And Lord, he said, I will even die. I will even fight for you. But when the soldiers took Jesus or took Jesus away, Peter went and watched from a distance. Of course, before the rooster crowed, Peter had denied uh, Jesus three times. And that's why, you know, when I think about this story of Peter, be loved and love others, we've also written a track on pure forgiveness. And the reason why they had the same picture and they both talk about this is a track where it talks about the forgiveness, which leads to love, the love of God. And this one is talking about how, how Jesus, you know, uh, extended a, a genuine love to Peter, even though Peter denied, you know, Jesus three times. It's interesting that the scripture shows us that, that Jesus is going to re, um, reaffirm his love to Jesus to Peter and have Peter reaffirm his love to Jesus. And this happens three times. It was like the Lord was saying, yeah, Peter, I know you've denied me three times. And let me tell you, Peter, I forgive you. I know you were walking in the flesh. You were walking in fear. And if you had that perfect love, which I want to give you, that fear that you had during that night would have been cast out. But now I want to tell you, Peter, that that perfect love that I'm going to continue to extend to you, continue to give to you, but my grace and mercy will cast out all those things that you're fearing. And, you know, we all walk in some type of fear. You know, I, I have different fear as a missionary. You know, there are things that you think about and, and struggle with and get anxiety over and even stress over. But when I began to realize and, and, and walk in that perfect love, of, of God, that agape love, that love that gives with no strings attached. It's amazing how then there can be peace. Even though you have blown it and you don't understand how you can be forgiven, Christ can still love you. There is many Christians, or used to be Christians, I will call it that way, out there roundabout that have given up on being a Christian because they have felt that they have failed God. And maybe you have failed God. Maybe you have walked back into sin. Maybe you have taken up your own self again and your own way of doing things instead of walking in Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, no matter, no matter how many times you may deny Jesus Christ, no matter how much sin you go in, we are given this passage of Scripture to show that God shows grace and mercy and is willing to continue to forgive and forgive and forgive. But we need to come and for confess and confess and confess. So when we look at this uh, passage of Scripture here, it's kind of unique because not only does this passage of Scripture uh, call Peter to um, back to a love, a, for a, a spirit of forgiveness into love, but it also calls Peter into the place of saying, hey, love, you know, Peter, love attached to love is also service. When you really want to, when you really love somebody, you're, you're at a place of serving that person. And sometimes we don't get that, you know, sometimes in our marriage relationship, sometimes the service seems to be one-sided or the giving of love one-sided, but you know the thing of Jesus is not one-sided. That when we, when we experience His love, and His love came through giving, and it came through serving. The whole gospel message is about giving and loving, and that's why Jesus, I think, when He's talking to Peter, Peter would understand. You know, the greatest commandment: love the Lord thy God with all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because it's not just a, a a love that is going up and back and forth between God, which is so important, but it also is to be a love that's supposed to be going horizontally between ourselves and others. And so that's why when when Jesus comes to Peter, they had been fishing in verse 15, we see, and so when they had uh, eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, 
Simon, son of Jonah, or some say son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, in reading and doing research, what is the more than these? Well, sometimes uh, two people say it can go into two different directions. You know what I mean? <laughs> and one direction is could be Jesus could say, Peter, are you loving me more than you love these other disciples? But I don't know if that's really what it's talking about. Because I like what uh, uh, some of the, 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 uh, the writers, the commentaries have said, that when Peter, when Jesus was confronting Peter, he said, do you love me more than these? And it may have to do with the other disciples. But it also had to do, Peter, do you love me more than your boat? Do you love me more than your nets? Do you love me with more than all this fish that's around that I have blessed you with and that you've now harvested and can go sell and, and make money on? Do you love me more than these things? And I sometimes lean, uh, lean towards that. That's, that's the first step. Are we willing to die to ourselves, to die to these things and love Jesus Christ? And so we, Jesus is saying, Peter, do you agape love? Do you love me more than these things? Than all that's around you? Now all that the world can offer. And then, of course, Peter responds, You know, Lord, that I love you. And then, then Jesus says, and of course, what happens here when, when um, Peter responds, he's using this idea of friendship love more than a, a godly love. And Jesus responds to him and said, okay, Peter, if you love me more than these things, you know, go out and, and feed my lambs. Look after my lambs, Peter. Just like I've looked after you. And I think of the idea of lamb, I think of the baby, the little, the little small lamb that you could hold in your arms. The young one. Go out and feed my lambs. Take care of the lambs that are there. And that itself is quite an interesting thing. So we see love is automatically connected to action, to doing something. But then Jesus doesn't stop there. He goes back and he says again to Simon Peter. And I think the reason why he does it three times because he wants to know that Peter is being forgiven. He's forgiven, being forgiven for each one of those denials that night. And he comes to a second time and he says, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Do you agape love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said, well, then tend to my sheep. Here again, action. If you love me, tend to my sheep to look after. You know, to, to not only uh, look after them, but feed them. And when I think of tend to my sheep, I automatically think of Psalm 23. How the shepherd goes before the sheep and he prepares the ground. And how he makes sure there's still a quiet water. It's how he makes sure that there's good grass and good food for the eat. And how he makes sure that the the sheep have been ministered to and taken care of and their illnesses and their hurts and pains have been cared for. This is the idea of tending. It's not just, okay, I'm going to carry you and do nothing else, as you would carry a little baby lamb. But now he's going on saying, I want to take you to another level, Peter. I want to, I want you to know that as I love you and I'm calling you to love me, that as we love each other, not only to go out and feed my lambs, but now also tend my sheep. You know, take care of them. You know, I've been reminding pastors, every time I see them at the office, I remind them that you're not only a shepherd, you know, to a particular group of people in a building, but you're also a shepherd to a community. I believe I'm a shepherd to a large community of people, both in Steinbach, around and about. I help where I can help. I shepherd where I can shepherd. You know, shepherd. And if there's a herding sheep, doesn't matter which flock they belong to. I want to tend to them. I want to encourage them. And that's what love is. Love is showing that you will pick up the young one and carry them, but you will also take the sheep and pick them up, or not pick them up, but walk with them and feed them and nourish them. And then it's interesting that as it goes on, Jesus says to him a third time. He says, he says to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved 
because he knows. See, in this idea, do you love me? There's a switch again. We got the word filial love, which is a brotherly love. And then we got agape love. And this is going on. And, and now Peter, after the third time, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said, well, you know, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all these things. You know everything about me, oh Lord. You know my heart. You know where I where I've blown it. And you know where I am now. And then Jesus said to him, feed my sheep so not only tend to them but now feed them take him into those green pastures and i see a progression of, of now he's got a flock he, he, he's got more than just the one or the few but now he's got a flock and that he needs to look after them but it all starts this whole thing starts because there is a relationship that jesus wants to get straighten out with Peter and to straighten it out there needed to be forgiveness and out of that forgiveness was going to come an abundance of love and a love that passes all understanding a peace that passes all understanding what God wanted to do is take Peter from just being a you know how would you sort of say a hearer of the word to become a doer of the word and so after the end of all this, he goes on and even further down. And, he, and when he had spoken this, he said to him, said to Peter, Peter, follow me. Just follow me, Lord, and I will show you. Follow me, Lord, and what you would have me to do. And so here he is. And that's why we printed this little Bible card. We're handing them out for Valentine's Day because... It talks about be loved and love others. True love. True love is when we not only love God, but we love others. And it would be interesting how we can bring that love about. But also true love is that where things have been broken in a love relationship, that we're quick to go and forgive one another. Don't let don't don't go to sleep while you still got anger one for another, or hostility one for another. Deal with it. And as you love and as you ask for forgiveness, you will see a, a, a growing, a nurturing of love, of God's love. Um, one man says uh, said, love always involves responsibility. And love always involves sacrifice. So there is a responsibility to love, but there is a sacrifice to love others. I believe that there's anything that we need to do today, especially on this day when we recognize love, is to figure out how can we go out and love others? How can we go out and ask for forgiveness one with another? How can we go out and get things straight? one with another because when you have forgiveness and love working together you know what you have after that you have unity and harmony and you have peace that passes all understanding so as we go to prayer now concerning these verses i just want to share with you a, a part of what we're doing not only are we handing out this and handing out the tracks but something else i want to pray about that for those of you who are local uh, in the Carolyn News, this track, that one on forgiveness, is being printed tomorrow in the Carolyn News. That deals with the whole area of, of forgiveness and love. Pray for that. goes out to 8,000 homes. Pray that that word would speak into people's lives, that they would see that, that love and how we can love others and love God through forgiveness. So, Father, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would take these scriptures... Lord, that we would realize that you're constantly challenging us to, to confess our love to you. Lord, not just to let each other know, well, we, we made a love commitment on that marriage day and we haven't had to speak that word love again ever since. But Lord, we pray that each day as a husband and wife or in a relationship that we're in, that we would speak, first of all, our love to you. Second of all, our love to those around about us. But then thirdly, that we would speak our love out to, to our neighbor, O oh God. That we would take the responsibility to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. 
And Father, we ask that you would take these scriptures, that, that, that perfect love would cast out all fear, that anxiety, that worry, and to realize that you first agape loved us and that you gave yourself for us. So not only could you love us so that we could be your vessels and tools to go out and love others. And Lord, not only have, have you asked us to do this, you've commanded of us to do this. And so, Father, I pray that today we would fulfill the commandment of God to love you with all our heart as you have loved us and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Oh, God, that we would pour out a blessing and love on those who we come in contact with today. And so we give you thanks for the power of your word, for how it can speak into us. We thank you for the grace and mercy that you showed Peter, the restoration, and Lord, how he was to love you more than all the things that are around about him. But not only that, but Lord, that he was to love your lambs. He was to tend, O oh Lord, your sheep. And then he was to feed your sheep, like Psalm 23 talks about. And so, Father, I pray that as we come together in prayer today, that you will make this part of our, our unity and harmony, where we come in an agreement, yes, Lord, this is what we will do, not in our ability and power, but in your ability and power now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to also pray for a country because we need to love our the people around the world. We need to pray for them. And, and because uh, several prayer requests have come in for the country of Ukraine, uh, I thought it would be appropriate because if there's ever a spirit of forgiveness and needed, it's in the midst of war. And we want to uh, realize that in that country, there's about 37 million people and 85% of them are, are, are some form of Christian, whether it's Catholic or, or other religions. And uh, only about 4% are what they would call Protestant or born-again believers. But isn't it interesting that these um, uh, people who are trying to call themselves Christians, both in in Ukraine and in Russia are fighting amongst themselves, are destroying each other. But we want to pray especially for the missionaries. We have a, a, a dear missionary that I've been and, and had been blessed to have as an interpreter for many times as I traveled through Ukraine. Anya, she's working in a very, very difficult area. We won't say where. But in Ukraine, and there's difficulties, there's fighting going on all around. She had come to Canada, but felt called to go back and continue to lay down her life. Isn't it interesting that in the midst of, of what we're teaching about this morning, Anya and Tanya is the other one that we're going to pray for in another part of Ukraine, her and her husband. They are willing to not only to love God, but to love others also, whoever it may be. To show the grace of love. Oh, what 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 an uh, an illustration, an example. You know, when even they in their own bodies, Anya's own physical body is not healthy and strong, but we can pray for her. Oh God, give her strength, give her ability, and Lord help her. Oh God, and so as we pray for the country of Ukraine, we also want to pray for Anya and Tanya, and ask that the Lord would be with them. Father, we ask now that you would just minister to these two missionaries. Anya, as she's in the very thick of things and and people are dying all around her. Oh God, just lift her up with encouragement. Let uh, Surround her with the arms of your love. But Lord, thank you that she is, she is taking scriptural literally where not only is she receiving your love, but she's being a conduit of love out to others. Oh Father, bless her today. Bless the hands, the, the, the things that she does and the people she talks with. May she have an anointing of your Holy Spirit. May the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of God continue to flow through her. And Lord, that you would watch over her physically and that you would watch over her mentally and, and that you would fill her spiritually. We pray for Tanya, Lord. We thank you for her and her husband and another part that are still able to function in a Bible school still able to teach, still able to equip the Lord. We thank you that they've taken out much of the materials, 
translated them and Lord have taken them across Ukraine and have taken them out Lord God even along uh, the, the, the front lines of war oh father may people uh, move from being religious to coming to the place of knowing you as their Lord and Savior and so Jesus we just lift up these 37 million Lord of, of people Lord that whatever state or whatever darkness they may find themselves in that your Shekinah glory the glory of who, who you are would shine forth now and we pray this in Jesus precious name and then we want to pray for families we want to pray that not only for our own family but also for our, our, our you know our cousins and aunts and uncles and relatives and and those around us grandparents whatever it may be uh, hmm? like Colwyn's mom and uh, many of my my relatives have got aches and pains and different things uh, let's just take time to pray that first of all that the Holy Spirit if there's something we need to know about concerning our family that he would bring a, a, a little flicker a little something in our heart that we would pray for them today and if there's something that we need to get forgiven between ourselves and them today that we would go and do it and somehow pray that God would work it out you know I know that there's a lot of tension in families and there's a lot of tension in the local churches oh the local churches and so we want to pray for our church family first and then we're going to pray for our physical family those i guess you could call our blood family those around about us and for our neighbors you know that those that we might be shocked and find out that we are christians that and those that live on our right side and left side do they know the love of jesus and are we willing to to go and, and love them let's pray father we we want to pray for the church family that we're part of. Oh Lord, we know that often within church family there is conflict, there is strife, uh, there is pain and hurt, and it's sad, oh God, where you call us to have unity and harmony. But Father, before we can have unity and harmony, we begin to need to forgive one another. Lord, people have split off. People have run off to other places. The sheep have been scattered, oh God. But Father, we pray that a spirit of forgiveness would come upon the local churches around the world. But also, Lord, we're praying a spirit of forgiveness for this whole southeast corner of Manitoba. Lord, I've been praying every day, Lord, that there would be a spirit of forgiveness. And then, Lord, that there would be a spirit of love that would be poured out, that they could forgive, they could get things right, that they wouldn't just keep walking by each other, that they wouldn't just, okay, okay I'm not going to, talk to you I'm gonna stay away from you but Lord how how is this gonna work when we are spend eternity in the kingdom of heaven Lord I pray here on earth that you would help us to forgive and then Lord to help us to love uh, our church family those around about us and then father we pray for those who are a physical family we we pray for Colwyn's mom Lord as the that we don't know all the final will for you but we know the, the 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 journey is is becoming less and less and the strength lord we pray that you would keep her uh, until such time that we can uh, communicate with her lord that we also would keep her family lord over in myanmar as they're facing war there we're praying also lord god for our uh, children and grandchildren that many of us have, O oh God, that they would not go wayward, but they would walk in you. They would see your love and you would see your forgiveness and say, yes, that's what I want. Lord, we pray for cousins and, and aunts and uncles that, Lord, are facing uh, surgeries, that are facing pain and facing all kinds of, of challenges, O oh God, that you would minister and heal their bodies. Oh God, even for the many that are watching this morning, there is a number, of Lord, whose bodies are weak, their, their fleshly lives are weak, oh God, and that we're older, and Lord, we're experiencing challenges within our bodies and sometimes within our minds. Oh God, help us to hear your voice of forgiveness, to hear your voice of love, and to know that you are extending mercy to us in every way. So we pray, oh God, for these 
relatives. We pray for our neighbors, our friends. Lord, people with uh, cancer issues, which we prayed about yesterday. People with um, physical um, issues where they need uh, re knee replacements and hip replacements. And then, Father, we just... What's that? Kidney uh, replacement. And, uh, Lord, there was just a, a, a list of them. But I, I pray today that they would have the anointing of forgiveness around about them and that they would have the outpouring of your agape love on their lives. And then, Father, as we close our time today, we pray for this article that will go in the Carolyn News tomorrow. Lord, that it's a seed, and that this seed may touch the lives of those who read it, that they may get hope, that they may get encouragement, that they may know that there's a way out of destructiveness and darkness and realize that they can be forgiven, and not only forgiven, but that you will love them for all eternity. And so, Lord, we pray that these seeds that go out tomorrow and in the days to come, that you would just use them for your glory now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And again, if you have prayer requests, message them to us. But remember today, God is a God of forgiveness and God is a God of love. And he wants to give you that forgiveness and give you that love for the purpose of giving it out to somebody else. Amen. So let's see what we can do with what God gives to us today as we go out and about and hopefully give forgiveness and love to others. Amen. God bless you. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again. Bye-bye for now.